So time now to go through the morning papers. Here with me to review them are the broadcaster and journalist Afia Hagen and writer and academic Mo Lovett. So welcome back to both of you. And um, we're going to delve inside the papers uh, for this hour, aren't we? And Mo, you're going to kick us off. Um, an article you spotted inside uh, this morning's Mirror newspaper reflecting on yesterday's uh, growth figures, the GDP figures that came out yesterday morning. Yeah, so a little bit of good news, I think. Um, looks like Britain's set to avoid an economic downturn. Um, figures from the economy show that um, it grew by 0.1%. Okay, it's quite a small amount, but it did go in the right direction. And that was in the month of November. Um, so, um, and it was all it was predicted to uh, decline by 0.2 percent. So, um, so, so that seems like it's good news. And figures from the FTSE 100 also uh, closed at a record high um, in that month. And it, it, the paper and uh, several analysts are putting it down to the fact that the World Cup gave a boost uh, to the economy, particularly the food and drink industry, which bo was boosted by 2.2 percent. Um, so generally good news. It might mean, um, sadly, that there'll be pressure on the Bank of England to increase interest rates, which might not suit um, mortgage um, owners like myself. Um, but generally, it's quite good news. It's quite a short blip, I think, in a, in a kind of longer term uh, picture, which is a little bit more gloomy. So I think, um, you know, there's no need to rest on our laurels. We really do need to kind of look at how we increased productivity in, in, in the UK economy. Um, but certainly um, it's meant that we've avoided that kind of technical definition of a recession going into uh, fall over two consecutive quarters. A little bit of good news. Well, yeah, that's right. And, and all eyes on, on whether or not um, inflation will come down, because that seems to be one of the, the big uh, problems, doesn't it? Um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. In the meantime, Afia, you wanted to... to um, turn to a double page spread with some pretty shocking pictures in the mirror. Yes, that's right. So this is um, an investigation in the Daily Mirror by their environment correspondent. And this is about um, uh, so someone who lives in Essex who goes on these hunting holidays, essentially to South Africa, where he's seen killing lions, as you can see here, at zebras, bears and other parts of the world for sport. And he is defending uh, shooting these wild animals and endangered species, I might add, uh, for fun, saying that he's playing a role uh, in the environment and also protecting these animals from poachers, even though he's probably doing the same thing that poachers do. You're killing the animals. Poachers kill them for uh, tusks, for other bits of the body. He's killing them for fun. He's trying to defend this by saying that he does it in a more humane way and comparing it to the way that animals are slaughtered in the United Kingdom. Um, but the problem here is, is that he's going on hunting holidays for fun to kill endangered species like lions, giraffes and rhinos in South Africa. Now, he has a license, so he's saying that British and American authorities don't need to get involved. But the point is, is that these are endangered species and you're going to whole other continent, a whole other con country to shoot them for fun. And I don't think this would be allowed if you were, you know, shooting the neighbor's dogs or cats or something like that. So why is it allowed that he's allowed to go to South Africa and kill endangered species and post these pictures on social media for fun? Yeah, and as you say, a pretty robust defence of, of what he's doing there in, in the paper as well. Um, let's move on to a totally different issue, Mo. Uh, you've um, picked out a, an article here in the Daily Star, uh, which um, talks about what Gary Lineker said about MPs' pay. Yes, yeah, so it's just caught my eye a little bit. Gary Lineker is saying that we need to increase MPs' salary to get smarter people to do a better job and that we don't entice the best minds. And I think what he's doing here is tapping into a kind of general feeling of disillusionment with our political class at the moment. Um, I just think he's going about it the wrong way. Um, and he's certainly been highly criticised for his comments on social media. I mean, uh, maybe, for, you know, if you're earning 1.35 million, the salary, um, MP salary doesn't look that great. But I think most of us think 84K a year and rising to 100K if you're a minister isn't a bad salary. But I think Part of the problem is that we have this kind of um, kind of political class that are career politicians. Actually, I'd like to see more politicians who are kind of motivated by a sense of duty and wanting to make the world or the country uh, a better place. I think it's those career politicians and the idea that it's a um, you know it's a way to earn a living is probably 
part of the problem. Um, we talked about where streeting in the you know in the first round of the papers, and um, there's a guy who's really motivated to make some improvements. And you know, it's not just on the labour bench, so I'm not being part of political yet. But those are the politicians that we want. The, you know, the people that have a sense of duty and want to make the country a better place for their constituents. Uh, and I don't really think salary is is the answer there. I'm afraid. Yeah, interesting. And uh, where some people say higher salary, you might get the best brains in the country, more tempted into politics rather than uh, to other industries where they can pay more. So it's quite an interesting debate, isn't it? Um, let's turn to uh, royal issues. It um, feels like um, ages since we talked about um, Prince Harry, but um, there is a double page spread here. Um, still uh, plenty of coverage isn't there around. In fact, it's on some of the front pages again. Uh, this is the Express's double page spread. And, and Afia, tell us what, what it's telling us. Well, yes, the Daily Express have conducted a poll uh, in which they were talked about the popularity of different members of the royal family after the release of Prince Harry's memoir, Spare. And it says here that popularity of King Charles III has actually gone up 10% after the release of the book. But the Queen Consort, Camilla, her popularity has gone down by 2%. Now, the Prince of Wales and the Prince and Princess of Wales have fared a bit better. Uh, their popularity has gone up for the Prince of Wales at 5% and up for the Princess of Wales 9%. But for Prince Harry himself, his popularity has dipped by 39%. Uh, and Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, her popularity has dipped by 35%. So it seems that after the release of Spare, uh, more people are finding sympathy with the royal family, with King Charles, especially rather than Prince Harry himself. Now, in terms of whether people think that Prince William and Prince Harry will ever heal their rift, um, most people thought that actually they would. Nine uh, percent thought they would heal their rift quite soon, but thirty-five percent said yes, but not in the short term. Now, the the conversation around uh, Meghan and Harry being stripped of their titles has been one that's been around for a long time. In this poll says that people thought that 54% of them thought that, yes, they should be stripped of their roles, uh, stripped of their titles, excuse me, of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And 31% of people thought that they should attend the coronation. And 44% of people thought that they should stay away. So lots of varying opinions there coming out after the release of Spare this week. Yeah, I mean, everyone's had something to say about it, haven't they? There's been so many opinions, and I'd be really curious to see what results you get to a similar poll in America, for example, whether or not they're viewed more sympathetically there. And um, the suggestion is that, 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 that Harry and Meghan are more popular there. Anyway, let's try and get another story in, Mo. This is inside The Guardian, and this is the new AI chatbot that is causing a few concerns, especially in schools and universities. Yeah, absolutely. It's called Chatbot, ChatGPT, and it's an app that can create essays and stories and even kind of help you write your job, a job application. It comes out of Elon, Musk, Elon Musk's Open AI Research Laboratory. And basically what you do, the AI is fed lots and lots of words, and then it comes out with sentences based on probability of usage, a bit like, like predictive texting on your phone. Um, but the concern within universities is that students will use it to write their essays and not learn the skill of writing essays. And so one university even scrapped essay writing as a method of uh, assessment in, in grading students. Um, I think they're jumping the gun a little bit quickly there. I mean, you know, good essay, the art of a good essay is um, in, in structure and creativity. And I'm not sure AI is quite ready to replicate that. Um, there's other people saying, you know, this actually could be a good thing. If, if the world of industry is going to use AI in this way, why shouldn't students get to grips with it? I suppose it's that old thing that new technology can be used for good purposes or bad purposes, uh, depending on its user. Yeah, no, that, no that's absolutely true. Um, and uh, we're, we're all just rushing to catch up, well, I am anyway, with what technology is out there uh, and its implications. Very briefly, um, Afia, a story about a lucky student at a gig. Fill us in very briefly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is a student at a college in Glasgow who has just got the opportunity to support Louis Capaldi uh, on tour when he's playing at the, the Ovio Hydro in Glasgow in front of 12,000 people. Wow. So this is a student who uh, goes to the new college in Lanark. She was asked by her lecturer if she was free 
on the 24th yeah. of January, I think it was. She said okay. yes, and now she's supporting Lewis Capaldi. Good Amazing. She said she thought it was a joke at the time, didn't she? Amazing stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're all out of time. See you again next hour. Thank you.